Star, and I'm back to guide you through the second series of Hot and Spicy. The set's changed a bit, hasn't it? Despite what you might think, I'm not going to be presenting the weather today. I'm actually going to be showing you how to make the delicious treat of Namora. So why have we got a map behind us, you might ask? That's because Namora actually has a couple of secret identities. In Egypt, Namora adopts the name of Basbusa, though some people refer to it as Harissa, whereas in Turkey and Greece, it can be called Ravani or Revani. Yet in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan and Palestine, it's referred to as Namora. <laughs> wow, is that confusing or what? Well, whatever way you look at it, how to make the delicious treat stays more or less the same, which is what I'm about to show you with our new guest chef, Claude. See you soon. I'm back today with Maria and Claude, otherwise known as the Lentil Ladies. So what are you cooking up for me today, girls? Well, because it's a nice day, we thought we'd do something sweet. Mm -hmm. Sounds and good. So we're going to cook um, Namura, mm -hmm. which is a, a Lebanese sweet. Namora is a famous Lebanese pastry made with semolina, soaked in sugar syrup and decorated with almonds. The sweet is typically found on trays of Arabic pastries alongside dishes such as baklava. This delicious dessert is very popular in many regions of the Middle East and can interestingly be classified under different names. In Lebanon it is called Namora as we are referring to it today, though Egyptians actually refer to this delicious treat as basbousa. It is also popular in the Jewish kitchens under the name of tishpishti, where it is generally made during the Passover holidays. It's semolina based and it has almonds and um, it's um, soaked in a fragrant syrup which has mm. orange uh, blossom flower and, um, and rose water. So uh, it's something that is delicious that you can find in the shops in Lebanon but it's quite nice if you can make it at home. Mm. You can find it as part of a baklava? Part of the baklava selection, mm. yes. But it's better if you make it yourself. It's always better if you make it, if you can be bothered. <laughs> to make the Nomura cake, you will need the following. 400 grams of medium semolina, 150 grams of caster sugar, 125 grams of ground almonds, 75 grams of shredded coconut, one large tablespoon of plain yogurt, 125 grams of butter that's melted, 200 milliliters of milk, one tablespoon of orange blossom water, and one tablespoon of rose water. For the syrup, you will need 335 grams of caster sugar, 200 milliliters of water, the juice of one lemon, and a dash of rose water and orange blossom water. For a start, the semolina, which is a, a medium, medium, not a very coarse semolina, it's because can semolina can be uh, coarse, medium, or fine. So we, we've chosen a medium semolina. And we have uh, the ground almonds, which uh, also will give it this lovely, lovely taste, which is at the same time fruity and mm. a little bit bitter. But it's actually counteracted with the sweetness of the sugar that we're, we're going to add. So it might be a bit different how you might find um, the, the dish as part of the klawa. It's, it in, I probably is, in a way, mm. because I'm not sure... Whether we've, we're adding now um, coconut, mm. uh, grated coconut. And then we have uh, the sugar. And, and we're going to add to this some melted butter and milk mm. and the, the fragrances. So Maria's going to melt some uh, Not spices butter. This time. No spices, fragrances. just fragrances. I've heard that people call this basbusa as well? In, I suppose they call it basbusa sometimes. It's, I've heard people mm. call it basbusa in Lebanon, which I believe is probably called basbusa in Egypt as well. Mm. Um, why, why do they have different names? Uh, different countries, different names, different appellations. It doesn't really matter. The thing yeah. is about the butter is it, it shouldn't, um, yeah. it should melt slowly and, and not bubble. Not That's, um, yeah. We don't want to make you know, don't want it to brown or anything, so... Just melting. Just melting slowly, yeah. yeah. It takes a bit of time, but it's worth doing. Now that the um, butter has uh, melted, I'm going to mix it with the cold milk. So we've got the cold milk. And the butter. So this 
cools the process. And then a little bit of orange blossom water and a little bit of uh, rose water. Do you find that really intensifies the flavour or do you oh, not yes. notice it? Yes, no, you do. I like it. I don't think you should overdo it, mm -hmm. but a little bit is just right. It just brings, you know, it brings the garden to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make a sort of um, paste, mm. um, which will be the basis of, of, of that. I mean, it's not quite a dough, you don't work it like a dough, but it's more like a thick paste. Mm -hmm. And we're going to leave it to rest for an hour. What's this? This is yogurt. Just a little bit, it's only a tablespoon of yogurt. In the meantime, we could be making the um, syrup. And so, when all the ingredients are well combined, mm -hmm. we can put a tea cloth and leave it. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it moist. Cut to keep it moist and leave it to rest so mm -hmm. that the, uh, the semolina and uh, the almonds absorb all the liquid so it'll become a little bit thicker once we're finished mm -hmm. with the soaking. Mm -hmm. And then we need the sugar. Okay, cast the sugar. Cast the sugar. sugar, yeah. And, and water and a little bit of lemon. Now that the sugar has melted, I'm going to increase just the um, heat a little bit and bring this thing to the boil mm. and then it'll um, um, slowly become a sort of a syrup so you, we lose a little bit of the water and the sugar becomes uh, thicker and then it'll be ready and then we can uh, and then flavor it with the uh, uh, orange blossom and the rose water blossom. yes The, the syrup has thickened. It's thicker and it's ready to be. Uh, it's on, on low heat and I'm adding a little bit of uh, uh, rose water and a little bit of orange blossom water. I will uh, bring it back very quickly to the boil and then it is uh, ready uh, to be used later once the, uh, the namura has been uh, baked and cooked and finished. So this is done. In the meantime, now our namura has rested for an hour and we are going to put it in this dish um, and uh, we're going to butter the dish. But I'm not going to use butter, I'm going to use a little bit of tahini, which gives it that little, you know, not too much of a taste, but it's quite nice. It sort of reminds you that you're eating something that comes from this part of the world. Mm -hmm. So what is uh, tahini then? Tahini is, uh, is sesame paste actually, mm -hmm. it's ground sesame which we use a lot in Middle Eastern, you know hummus, mm -hmm. in, and then it's based on, on chickpeas that are ground with tahini. But you actually get the oil, so it gives the same effect as it's, butter. It, it's, more, yeah, it's more like a paste, it's ground mm. and then sieved and the a sort of lubricative quality. Yes, yes. And it, but it also has a taste, it has a nutty mm. taste. Mm. Right, so now our um, dough has, or our paste our, has rested. I'm going to um, put it in this a dish which I've um, buttered with a bit of tahini and then we're going to prepare it to go to the oven and I like to use my hands I mean I'm using the fork now to get things out but then I'm going to flatten it really perfectly so we can have the same thickness all over that's very important also why is that important because a, it'll um, cook evenly, mm -hmm. more evenly. Also, it looks nicer. <laughs> Presentation is always... Presentation, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use my hands to make sure, because when I put my hands, I can tell how thick, if it's thicker in places or not, which I can't tell if I'm using a spoon. Now, what I do is I will make sure that all the sides are clean. So you don't want them to burn and look unappetizing because mm -hmm. we want appetizing food. Because I've delicious. got a sweet tooth, I don't know about no. you, but I love sweets, sadly. Mm. <laughs> now, what I like to do also is I know that this measures about 30 centimeters. I want to cut it into uh, five, uh, is it five or no, six centimeter 
pieces this way so that we have mm -hmm. equal mm -hmm. um, uh, so you I, this is an old ruler which belongs to my children when they went to school but if you have a new ruler you may as well use it as well we keep it there and we make sure that we have equal and then we do the same on this side the Lebanese cuisine is very pedantic in a way I wouldn't say pedantic, no. I would say sophisticated. Sophisticated, <laughs> in a good way, of course. In a good way. Pedantic yes. in a good way. And, and, and then we run the knife almost to the end. Are you just making the marking? or are you I'm going making the, the marking. Yes. Not all the way to the bottom of no. the dish. So we need to put precisely all facing the same way. Yeah. And you don't need to press them down too much, but no. enough for them not to lift off in the, in the cooking. And to pick up the best. And to pick the good ones. Is this just so. purely aesthetic or does it complement the flavour as well? It complements the flavour and it's yes. also aesthetic. Because remember we've used um, almond, powder, uh, almond, ground almonds in it. Oh yes. Now we're going to put it in the oven. And there it goes. For one hour and ten minutes. We forget about it. So we could go out and have a cup of coffee now. It's delicious. Mm. It's lovely. So now we wait. Good. Yeah. For a couple of minutes. And then we put with the, the syrup that we've already prepared. Mm -hmm. And it's good to put it when it's hot mm -hmm. because it's going to absorb it. If you put it when it's cold, there's no absorption and it stays there and sticky on top. Here, the, the um, cake will actually pick up all the bits of um, syrup. And the kind of the grid lines you cut earlier on help absorb? Will help, yeah. yeah. So, but then don't ever attempt cutting it while it's still hot. You lose it. It'll um, crumble. You just have to be patient. Wait a few hours before you can cut it, mm -hmm. or even better, overnight. So you leave it to, you see, you, it's all slowly going in. Yeah, there's a you layer know? on yes, top. Yes, yeah. And it'll be moist and sweet and delicious. Mm, I can't wait. So I think we need to really leave it to, to um, uh, for a while and then we can come back and cut it and put it in a lovely plate. To make the Nomura cake you will need the following 400 grams of medium semolina, 150 grams of caster sugar, 125 grams of ground almonds, 75 grams of shredded coconut, one large tablespoon of plain yogurt, 125 grams of butter that's melted, 200 millilitres of milk, one tablespoon of orange blossom water and one tablespoon of rose water. For the syrup, you will need 335 grams of caster sugar, 200 millilitres of water, the juice of one lemon and a dash of rose water and orange blossom water. I'm going to take it now and leave it somewhere to um, sit and set and come back in a few hours mm -hmm. to cut it and for us to taste it. Away from hungry children. Away from possibly. hungry <laughs> producers and <laughs> presenters. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Namora is not only a delicious treat, but something that is actually a not so guilty pleasure. It is a semolina based sweet, which is a healthier alternative to traditional flour based cakes in many respects. Semolina is digested slowly, therefore working as a preventative measure to overeating, which puts off hunger for longer. Try some now. I most certainly would. I've been waiting for you to say that. I've got my plate ready. There you Wonderful. are. Wonderful. All right, I'll tuck in the fork. Try not to make too much mess. It's quite hard on the top, but if it's lovely and moist in the middle, beautiful texture. Lovely. Delicious. It's very rich. Mm. Now the interesting very thing rich, about yeah. this um, nam Namura is that it should be also brown in the bottom as mm. much as it is on the top. 
So this really means that it's been cooked mm -hmm. through. That's all from Hot and Spicy today. If you want to know more about the show or see the ingredients list, please see levant.tv. And also, be sure to like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash hot and spicy TV show. So until next time, be sure to keep it hot and spicy. <laughs>